today we'll be asking the question, how do we suppress the first string of an incoming telephone call? Of course, that begs the question, why would we want to suppress the first ring of an incoming phone call? Well, the answers are varied. A common reason is the use of robocall blocking solutions such as Nomo Robo, which function using simultaneous ring, where on their end, after the first ring, they will screen out, basically answer and hang up on any bad calls which means that the phone will only ring once and then any malicious calls will be dropped. However, that still means whenever you get any kind of call, bad or good, the phone will still ring once, which can be, well, annoying. And so a common solution to this has been to buy what is called a first ring suppressor which is a dedicated inline device, sort of like this coupler here, but with actual logic in it, to filter out the first ring, but pass all subsequent rings, so the second ring onward, through normally. Unfortunately, there is a slight problem here. You can't buy a first ring suppressor anymore. There used to be a listing on Amazon for such a product. The seller has long since gone kaput, and you can't buy them on Amazon or eBay or anywhere. I've looked here, there, and everywhere, and there are none to be found, which means we have to get a little bit creative and potentially explore some alternate solutions to accomplish the job. So we have three gadgets here. The first one that we are going to look at is the Digitone Call Blocker. And this is one of the earlier models. And it's basically a hardware robocall or unwanted call blocker. So the phone line comes into the unit and then the telephones plug in to the other jack. And the idea is that based on the call RED, it will screen the call, and if it is allowed, then the phones will ring, and if not, it will answer and hang up. And with its first string suppression capability, in theory, you don't even know that you had one of those calls that it hung up on. All right, so what we can do is program this device, and I've adjusted the wiring so that this telephone here is directly on the telephone line, so it's not going through this unit. And then I have this phone as well as a few others that are run through the telephone port on this device. Now it has to be programmed through the telephone interface. So I'm going to hit program. And now it's going to tell me to pick up the phone. And I can dial 92 to see what modes are currently enabled. And I'm going to dial 3-2. Now it's in standby mode. So in this mode, the device basically does nothing and will pass all calls through. If I go to business mode, which is 3-1, it will uh, pass all calls through. And if I enable mode 70, that will enable first ring suppression so that it will only uh, it will only pass the second ring onward through. All right, so I've hung up now, and right now it's in business mode, so that means out of area calls and blocked caller ID private calls will pass through. Um, standby mode. I mean, everything passes through immediately. The device does nothing. In mode 31, there is still some logic being done, such as the first ring suppression. But you have to be careful with these. If you change the mode, some of the settings that you would expect for that mode get disabled. That's why I had to explicitly put it back in mode 70 there. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a call here.
to this phone line. Okay, so that phone is directly on the line. But this phone is going through here. So you can see that it suppressed the first ring, and now all subsequent rings are going through. Alright. So, that was with first ring suppression passing all calls through. So, kind of works like a first ring suppressor, but there is a catch. And the catch is that it requires caller ID. I'm going to go ahead and completely disable caller ID on the extension that this is connected to, and we'll see what happens. So I've now gone ahead and disabled caller ID on this line. That means there will be no caller ID spill at all after the first ring, as there is usually. So I'm going to place the call. Aha! Uh -huh. And notice that the phones that are going through the telephone interface on this are not ringing. And I have changed nothing on this device. It is still in business mode with first ring suppression. But only the phones that are not going through this are ringing, because this is directly on the line. So this is our control unit, so to speak. So what's going on here? Well, it turns out that these units require caller ID to function at all, even if you only want to use them for first ring suppression. And I actually spoke with someone at Digitone, and that is because their earlier models actually were capable of doing this and other things like distinctive ring. Um, I think it's called Global Call Protect or something like that. Um, the first unit they made in the 90s. But after the recession, they kind of cheaped the unit down and, and cut a bunch of stuff out so that they could lower the price on these. And as a result, these are not capable of suppressing the first ring if caller ID is not present. I suspect that's because they are looking for the caller ID spill in order to transition some internal state from having received the first string to after the first string. And because it doesn't see that, it always thinks it's the first string. So if you have caller ID, that's great. It turns out the application where I wanted to suppress the first string is on a POTS line that does not have caller ID, which makes this completely useless for first string suppression in that case. However, it can be useful for other things. If you do have caller ID, it will work for that purpose. And also, if you want to suppress all rings, as we were effectively just doing here, in the absence of caller ID, then it can do that as well. However, for my use case, this is unfortunately not going to cut it. The next unit here that we're going to look at is this ring director a fully automatic line switch. And this is a basically a distinctive ring switch or distinctive ring router. And it recognizes four different distinctive rings. So the idea here is that you order a distinctive ring from your telephone company. And then depending on which ring cadence comes through, it can actually route the call through to the appropriate port. So it's a simpler concept than a, a fax switch or something like that, which typically will answer the call and then determine what type of device it needs to be connected to and then put the call through and regenerate fake ringing. This, I believe, um, will not answer the call. So it's, it's more passive and it won't mess up any other stuff. Unfortunately, I do not have the proper power supply for it. Um, I believe it is a six... 6 volt DC center negative a uh, couple hundred milliamp power supply that unfortunately I do not have I could probably get one but I had this laying around so I just wanted to kind of show that these kinds of things do exist similar to this unit it does require a power supply which can be a disadvantage but this also has a couple features along with it such as exclusion and the ability to route 
all of your distinctive rings to different interfaces. Now this next unit we will look at here, this is a distinctive ring director. But you may notice that this is appears to be completely passive. It's an inline device that doesn't seem to require a separate power supply. So I'm going to open this up and we'll take a closer look at it. All right, so I've gone ahead, unboxed it, and wired it up. We have the telephone line coming in on the left, and then we have it going out to the telephones on the right. And it lets you choose between four different ring cadences. So long, short, 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 long, and short, long, short. And I believe those are actually the same cadences from this one. Long, short, 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 long, and short, long, short. So fairly standard cadences there. It also has a polarity switch. So you can set it to the right polarity. And then here we can see in its list of features that indeed it is powered by the telephone line. So this is very sleek, does not require a power supply, and it's nice and small. So it's certainly more elegant for installation. So I've left caller ID disabled on this line. We can go ahead and give this a call. All right, so we can see that in this case here, initially only this phone was ringing. But towards the end of the ring, it actually cut through ringing to the telephone devices. So unlike this little guy here, which actually required a full ring in order to pass through the, the ringing to the rest of the telephones, this cut through quicker than that. And if you think about it, it makes sense, right? This has an explicit first ring suppression setting. The goal of this device is not to suppress the first ring. I'll repeat that. It's not trying to suppress the entire first ring. Instead, it's trying to decode enough of the first ring that it can figure out which of these ring cadences it is. And as a result, it's able to be a little bit faster and pass your ringing quicker than that first ring. So before that ring even finishes, it's determined that it's seen enough of the ring that it has to be a long, normal ring. Um, because if you think about it, just looking at these visually, by the time it gets to about three quarters through that first ring, it's already eliminated the other three as possibilities. So it knows it can pass that through. And that's when that phone started to ring. So I'll demonstrate again. So it only takes about a second or so in order to do that. So how does this work then if you want a first ring suppressor? Well, it depends if you need to suppress the entire first ring or not. If you're using this for a robocall application, you very well may need to suppress the first string, in which case this is probably not going to work for you because you'll still get that burst of ring at the end. However, if you only need to suppress the very beginning of the ring, it could potentially work. And that is a little bit closer to my application where I have something else that is going to answer the line almost immediately. And if it's able to do it, before ringing starts to pass through, then that's okay. But it needs to answer within half or three quarters of that first ring. So it doesn't have a whole lot of time to do that. Now the actual first ring suppressor that was being sold, I'll leave a link to the defunct product listing in the description, but it was about this form factor. It's a very small, again, inline device powered by the telephone line, so no separate power supply. So similar to this, um, I believe it only had a modular jack on one end and then the other end would just plug into the phone line. And of course, there weren't any settings you could adjust like there are in here because it would simply suppress the first ring and pass it on. 
So that would probably be better for this application, but since it's basically unobtainium now, um, this will have to do. So this is kind of an interesting problem, honestly, and there's even a guy that, after trying to find a first string suppressor, gave up and basically built his own using an Arduino. I didn't feel like doing that. I was looking for a solution using commercially available off-the-shelf uh, products, and so that's why I've compared these here. So if you're trying to do something similar, hopefully this was helpful and you have an idea of what solutions might potentially work for you.